Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and today I'm gonna talk about the key features of the Synology DS723 Plus and why this model is a big upgrade over its predecessor the DS720 Plus. This model is great for pro users or small businesses who need a fast centralized storage that supports up to 10 gigabit ethernet connection for fast data transfer. And that's why Synology added some key features to the DS723 Plus to give you a noticeably faster storage. So without further ado, let's jump in. Just a quick disclaimer, this video will give you a preview over the key new features of the DS723 Plus without going through any detailed benchmark or performance tests as I don't have the capable hardware that can take full advantage out of the faster storage of this unit. So let's start with the specs to know the key differences between this model and its predecessor, the DS720 Plus. First, it has the Ryzen R1600 dual-core processor with hyper-threading technology to give you a total of four threads with a clock speed of 2.6 GHz and a maximum boost up to 3.1. Benchmark-wise, the R1600 is 5% faster when compared to the Intel Celeron J4125 used in the DS720+. Plus. But unfortunately, the Ryzen doesn't have an embedded GPU while the Celeron comes with the Intel UHD 600 graphics card that gives an extra boost while transcoding media. This could be a downside if you are planning to use the DS723 Plus as a Plex server, but other than this, you should expect better performance. It has 2GB of DDR4 pre-installed RAM expandable up to 32GB with ECC support, which prevents data errors. And this is a big jump over its predecessor, which is capped at 6GB with no ECC support. You get a total of two memory slots that can be found under the drive bay, which are easy to access. Connectivity-wise, it supports 1 gigabit Ethernet connection out of the box, but it can be upgraded to 10 gigabit Ethernet using the optional E10G22-1 module that can be attached to the back of the unit, which is another advantage over the DS720 Plus, because later down the road, if you want to expand your storage using the DX517 expansion unit, the 10 gigabit Ethernet connection will make a big difference in the data transfer speed. And by the way, this module also works with the 2.5 and 5 gigabit Ethernet connections in case you don't have the latest and the greatest hardware. The module is sold separately and you will find the purchase link in the description below. The third most important upgrade is the ability to use the additional NVMe drives that are usually used for caching to be part of the storage pool itself. And this is something the previous DS720 Plus lacks. But keep in mind that only Synology's NVMe drives can be used for storing data while third-party brands can only be used for caching and Synology made it that way as they can control the heat of their own drives when used as a storage which is not possible with other brands. As you saw the DS723 Plus will minimize the need for an upgrade as you have the ability to increase your RAM up to 32 GB and the Ethernet connection to 10 gigabit when you need to and instead of purchasing a whole new unit to improve your storage performance. And now let me show you the setup I have. I have two Synology 4TB SATA drives plus two Synology NVMe drives with capacity of 400GB each and I will use all of them as a storage. I also have Synology's 10 gigabit Ethernet module that I talked about earlier, but unfortunately neither my PC nor the router I have support 10 gigabit Ethernet to take full advantage out of it. And that's why I won't go through any benchmark tests. Finally, the device comes with two Cat5e Ethernet cables that can support up to 2.5 gigabit per second, which is all I need for now. But if you want to use the 10 gigabit connection, you need to purchase a Cat6 cable or higher. Next, you get some screws to fix your hard drives, two keys to lock the drive bays, and the power adapter. And now let's put everything together. I will start by installing the NVMe drives. The slots are located at the bottom, and the process is fairly easy to do without any extra equipment, but just your hands. Next, I will install the 10 gigabit Ethernet module, which requires a screwdriver to remove the protective cover, then push it all the way to the end and use the same screws to secure it in place. Lastly, the 3.5 inch mechanical hard drives can be attached to the drive bay using two brackets as shown now on the screen. But if you're gonna use a 2.5 inch SSD, you will need the included screws to fix it as shown in this diagram. Now let's go through the ports really quick. You get two 1 gigabit Ethernet ports in addition to the 10 gigabit one I just installed. But keep in mind for the initial setup, you have to use one of the built in ports. And once done, you can switch to the 10 gigabit Ethernet connection to get the faster speed. There is an eSATA port for storage expansion. Then we have the power input. And finally, on the front, it has a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port 
to easily connect an external hard drive or a flash memory with a transfer speed up to 5 gigabit per second. Now everything is ready and the unit is connected to my router through a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and the PC is connected over a Wi-Fi 6 network which will give me a 1.2 gigabit per second transfer speed which means I'm not taking any advantage out of the 10 gigabit ethernet connection but let's take a look at the figures shared by Synology. Using HDD and the 1 gigabit ethernet connection should give you 225.7 megabytes per second read speed and about the same for the write speed. Switching to 10 gigabit ethernet with the same HDD drives you get 449 megabytes per second read speed which is twice as fast as the 1 gigabit connection but the write speed is almost the same at 224 megabytes per second. But when you combine the NVMe drives with the 10 gigabit ethernet that's when you get a massive boost. It can reach up to 1179 and 765 read and write speeds respectively and that's why being able to use the NVMe's as a storage is really handy. By this you can archive your data on the HDD and keep the frequently accessed files on the NVMe for faster workflow. So let's see how you can do this while setting up the device. To set up your Synology NAS for the first time, all you need to do is to type find.synology.com in your browser and it will automatically detect your device. Just follow the on-screen instructions to install the Desk Station Manager or in other words, the software needed to manage your device. It will take about 15 minutes to finish so let's skip to the next part. Once done, you will need to create an admin account with a username and password. Then it will take you through a wizard to set up some of the default features and settings. After that, you will get a floating pop-up to help you create your storage pool. I will start by creating a storage pool using the two 4TB hard drives. I will keep the RAID type set to SHR, which is Synology's own hybrid RAID. Then I will give it a description, choose the hard drives I want to include, which is both. And this RAID type will set the two drives to mirror each other to keep my data secure in case one of the drives failed. And that will only give me 50% of the available storage, which in this case 3.6 terabytes. I will repeat the same steps again, but this time I will create another storage pool using the NVMe drives. And by this, now I have a normal HDD storage pool for archiving data and another super fast NVMe storage pool for data intensive tasks like video editing, for example. And if I got the chance to upgrade my PC and router to 10 gigabit ethernet in the future, I will get an amazing transfer speed. So I think that gives you an idea about the new features of the Synology DS723 Plus and how it can make it much easier for you to enhance your network performance and the capacity over time without the need to purchase a whole new setup, which is definitely more cost efficient on the long run. So I think that's pretty much it for today and see you in the next video.